Hello and welcome to this level 3 Mathematics in Context training video for Pearson edXL. In this video we're going to look at box plots. The specification reference says that we need to interpret, analyze and compare distributions of data sets from univariate empirical distributions through appropriate graphical representations including box plots. There are no relevant formulae available in the formula booklet for this specification reference. Here's the mapping document mapping the content of the core maths maths in context references to the GCSE and GCE. So some ideas for making use of box plots in lessons. So medicine in medical trials, the patient outcomes are often displayed as box plots. So in the simplest cases, this results might be from those that took the treatment compared to those that had a placebo. If you research or Google the medical information like blood pressure, for example, you can find usable results. Economics, maybe you could look at box plots in representing the distribution of income levels in a population. So you could split that up by various demographics, or you could look at box plots to compare different countries. Key skills for this reference include students need to be able to find the median, lower quartile and upper quartile from a simple list of raw data. The knowledge of the five key statistics for a box plot and being able to plot them on an appropriate scale. Familiarity with the calculations to identify outliers or to show that no outliers exist. Students should be taught how outliers are plotted in the context of a box plot. Comparison of box plots needs to include reference to both a median and a measure of spread. And comparisons need to refer to the context of the data. So here's an exam question. It says there were three qualifying sessions at the Australian Grand Prix. The data for the fastest lap time for each driver for the first qualifying session is summarized in the box plot, as shown. This table below gives information about the fastest lap time for each driver for the second qualifying session, and there are 15 drivers and times in that table. It goes on to define an outlier as any value that is greater than the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, or less than the lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And then the question asks us to, using the data for the fastest lap time for each driver for the second qualifying session, show that there are no outliers. So back to the table, we need to start off by finding the median. Now there are 15 bits of data, so the median one is going to be the eighth one. Once you've got the median, if you look at all the values below the median, and find the median of those, that will be your lower quartile. And if you do a similar job above the median, so not including the median, all the values above it, find the median of those, gives us our upper quartile. And it's worth pointing out that the units here are in minutes and seconds, which is a little bit tricky to work with. So I'm going to convert them into seconds. So this one here of one minute and 27.796, well, a minute is 60 seconds, so this will be 87. 796 seconds. And you can see that's my lower quartile and a similar thing for the upper quartile. The calculation to identify the bounds for outliers uses the interquartile range. So we're going to subtract these two to get the interquartile range. And I'm going to just divide the page up a little bit there. Using the calculation as shown, so we've got the upper quartile plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. That's the upper bound for anything above that is a outlier. And just converting that back to the useful times, one minute, 30 seconds, 0.476. Similar sort of thing at the bottom end. So lower quartile minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. It's converting that into a different time unit as well. So minutes and seconds again. And now we need to compare them to the table. So the lower bound there is 1 minute 26.188. And you can see that that's below the lowest time we've got. And the 1 minute 31 up here is above the highest value we've got. So we just need to point that out. There are no values in the table below 1 minute 26.188 or above 1 minute 30.476. Mark's theme for this question then this gives us a method for finding either the lower quartile or upper quartile gains one mark, a method mark for the full method to calculate one of the boundaries, and a final mark for having 
both figures and identifying that there are indeed no outliers. The examiner's report says that there were some arithmetical errors, often due to the unfamiliar combination of minutes and seconds in the way the time was written. A common reason for not gaining the final mark was due to not clearly comparing the calculated values with the minimum and maximum data. So several students were able to find those important values, but didn't clearly show that there were no values beyond those from the data. The next part of this question asks us to, on the grid opposite, draw a box plot to summarise the data for the second qualifying session. So we need to go back to our table here. We've already got some of the important values here, but we also need to pick out the lowest value and the highest value. And just summarising those ones on this page. So we're going to put them onto the, the plot here. You'll see that the x-axis has already been filled in for us, and there's 10 gaps between each of them. So each little gap is 0.1 seconds. So 1 minute 26.9 is going to go just there. And you'll see that because the original box plot was drawn with six squares, I've chosen to go make it six squares as well. We need to put further lines in at the lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and then the highest value. Joining the middle ones up to make the box, and then continuing the whiskers out to extend to the minimum and maximum values. So mark scheme for finding a median, which can be in the previous section as I did, or could be on the table. Two further marks for a correct box plot drawn and labelled, and you can get one of those marks if you are mostly correct, so up to two errors with plotting it. The examiner's mark scheme says that a lot of correct answers were shown here. There were some errors from inaccurate plotting, and some students didn't include tails to extend out to the minimum and maximum values. Part B of this is use the box plots to compare the two distributions. So as a reminder, that's what our box plots look like. So there's two marks here. We need to make two comments, one about the average and one related to the spread of the data. It is box plots, so we're going to be talking about the median average. For example, the second qualifying laps were faster on average as they had a lower median time. And we need to talk about the spreads. So the first qualifying lap times were more consistent as the interquartile range is smaller. This is shown by the narrower box than in the second qualifying lap. So the mark scheme essentially says one mark for each comment, although a note at the bottom that you can only get two marks if at least one of the comparisons is in context of the question. So the examiner report says that it was looking at interpreting and comparing distributions. And this is something that students often find to be a bit of a challenge. And some students are misinterpreting a higher average as being better, whereas, of course, this is a race, so a lower average would be a better score. Students should be comparing the medians and the spread of the data in the context, and we're looking for correct terminology. So it's the median, it's not the middle value. More often than not, students were commenting on the median and nothing else about the, the range or interquartile range. Into some top tips, then. Students commonly lose marks for not finding the median, lower quartile, and or upper quartile from a list of values correctly. Now, this might be something that you think should be fairly straightforward, but experience shows that students do find it more challenging than you might expect, so give it plenty of practice. When students are doing this, they should check to see if the data is in order, and if it's not, ensure they put it into order first. Give students plenty of opportunity to deal with outliers. Drawing the box plots is often done very well, but unfamiliar scales can cause difficulties. When you're comparing data, remember to emphasise that two comments should be made, one regarding the average and another about the spread. And that the use of the correct terminology is important, as mentioned before. So, for example, we're talking about the median, not the middle. Thank you for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful.